Hallelujah. For all of the blessings since the first teaching this morning, or let's take it back to since the Shiloh prayer hour. Would you give him thanks? Lift up your two hands all over this place and around the world. Give him thanks if anything has happened to you. Give him praise and glory. Now, thank him specifically. Light has sprang up out of darkness in your life. Now, give him thanks for it. Give him thanks from the depth of your heart. Celebrate him. precious name we have given thanks. John was on the ice called Patmos for the word of the Lord. For the word of the Lord. He was on a mission for the word. He was on a mission for an encounter with the word. He wasn't there for sightseeing. He was on the eyes called Patmos for the word of the Lord and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. He was on a world mission. He wasn't there for long time no see. He was on a mission for the word of the Lord. For the word of the Lord. He sought to out for that to return with. He was on a mission for the world. And the Lord appeared again unto Samuel at Shiloh by the word of the Lord. How many of us were blessed by the last teaching? You know, this is one thing we must go with. Every truth of scriptures is valid for all times but applicable to only those who are interested. Valid for all times. Seeking the kingdom of God first is valid for all times. It's not a seasonal verdict. It's an all time verdict. All time, but applicable to whosoever is interested. Giving of your tithe, is for all time. Praise God. Hallelujah. Obedience is for all time. Building your faith is for all time. Every truth of scripture is valid for all times and applicable to whosoever is interested. For all times. Um called an apostle of faith, but I'm still building my faith. You don't build it, it will fail. Amen. Amen. Even if you are the manufacturer of a car, you still have to maintain it. Yes, sir. Oh, your engine will knock, piston and ring, and all of that. It, it doesn't matter. It, it's for all time. But applicable to only those who are interested. Every truth of scriptures lives and abides forever, forever, forever. I'm interested, Jesus, in every verdict of scriptures. Open me up to the next. Lift up your two hands and ask God for another raw encounter with the world. You had some in the first, some in the second. Some in the third, he has reserved some for you also in the last one. Now, ask him. Every truth of
of scripture is valid for all times. There is no season of scripture. Every scripture is valid for all times. For all times. Now, help me, Jesus. I'm ready for another encounter. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Give the Lord a big hand. Get seated. I said, give Jesus a big hand. Every true apostle lives on. Amen. They are the high priestly order of the, new, of the Old Testament in the New. They replicate themselves in as many as are connected. And so they live on. You can't kill them. Wigglesworth is not dead. We are still carrying his stuff all around with his thunderous voice. His unshakable stand. Yes, Egan collected it, and we collected it from Egan, and now others are collecting it, and so they live on. I'd like you to be sensitive because something must break loose in your life. <laughs> and it's breaking loose on this ground. Yeah. There is no right off case with God. There is no belated case with God. There is no incurable disease with this great physician. There is nothing called termina. He speaks to the dead, not the dying. He speaks even to the dead. So get set. Every session here offers an encounter for whosoever is interested. I'll be sharing with you for the time we have this morning on proofs of encounters with the world. Because if you don't know the proofs, you won't know whether it's an encounter or just another other story. What are the proofs of world encounters? What are the proofs of world encounters? Prove all things and hold that fast, which is true. What are the proofs of world encounters? Prove all things and hold that fast, which is true. What are the proofs of when I have an encounter with the world? What are the manifestations that follow? Number one, every world encounter steers supernatural faith. Steers supernatural faith. You know what made the faith of Abraham unshakable in spite of his age was a raw encounter with the world and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. That came to him, Genesis 12, 3, he had it. So against hope, he believed in hope according to that which was spoken. <laughs> He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith. Every genuine world encounter spurs supernatural faith. Supernatural faith. When I encounter my far above position over the kingdom of darkness, Amen. I was looking for the devil to give him a knock on the head. Now you poor devil. I say, I am far above you. And you are posing as if we are equals and contenders. Contenters. Stop that nonsense. So I made another call. How many of you are witches here? Stand up. 1979. It's poor 
God's supernatural faith. You can't stop a man that has encountered the world in one area of his life. You can't stop him. You can't stop him. One of our members was crying in dickness in the church that I was, I should stop saying I will be rich. Amen. She was getting concerned because of how people are talking against me in town. I said, <laughs> I said, is it not me they are talking against? Why are you crying? I said, I will not only be rich, I'm going to be the richest. And I got to church that same day, that same evening, and I said, one of you was crying today that I should not say I will be rich again. I said, ah. I'm not just going to be rich, I'll be the richest. I'll be because supernatural faith is tiered with any genuine word encounter. I heard from God his plan and the conditions for his plan to be made manifest. And I, I, I said, I can never be poor. It's poor supernatural faith. When your faith is shaky in any area, you have not had an encounter. You have not had, you are yet to have an encounter with the world. <laughs> okay. Supernatural faith is one vital proof of a true encounter with the world. That is God appearing to you from his world and delivering it to you as a person. No, you can't doubt it anymore. Another characteristic or proof of what encounter is supernatural boldness. Come and say boldness. Supernatural boldness. Amen. But we cannot but speak those things we have heard and we have seen. Supernatural boldness is one of the vital proofs of true world encounter. I would tell people in those days in Kaduna, don't think I'm going off my mind. I'm speaking to crowds you cannot see. Supernatural boldness. I will build my church. That's not my and the gates of hell. Built by anybody, including institutions, shall not prevail against it. No, there is not one policy of any institution, including government, that can quell the church in Nigeria. No, I, I, I tell you the truth. No. I have from God. I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against us. No. No. Church is not a government agency. No. No. Freedom of worship is the natural right of every citizen of this nation Amen. and most nations of the world. Amen. It's a right it's not something you apply for. It's a right. So, my unstoppable boldness and confidence came from Matthew 16, 18. I had it before you knew the meaning of politics. Mm. Praise God. Hallelujah. Mm. Supernatural so, boldness. And that is the platform for provoking signs and wonders. They were speaking boldly in the Lord. And he was giving witness to the word of his grace by granting signs and wonders to be done by their hand. If you have caught any light, now, my wife says she had Miss Kai say, it cannot happen. Can I have my food, please? That's word encounter. You have high blood pressure, not me. Look at it, not necessary. So, Supernatural boldness is a vital proof of world encounter. Supernatural boldness. Now, I can't say receive it. I can only say set yourself an encounter. It is what spurs it. It's what steers it. Set yourself for a world encounter. Set, set yourself. 
How many can't you see me talking about I can never be seen? I've been saying that since 79. They say, okay, you will soon see. I'm saying what I'm saying. For whatever you shall have, whatever you say, not what you think, not your comment. I will have whatever I say because I saw him took my infirmity. He bore my sicknesses. I'm entitled to be free from them because somebody already carried them. You don't pay for any item twice. No. Now, listen to me. Your boldness stems out of your encounter with God in his world. You got it. You just got it. Nobody can silence you. If you know how many demons want me to be sick, how many witches and wizards and peeping, you know, they, to call them peeping wizards. They say, ah, he's still there. The man is still there. Eh? The man is still there. Amen. I love that illustration of cable sizes. <laughs> you know, there are some wires that you'll be hearing. Shh, 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 shh. You, don't, <laughs> you don't need to watch out for beware. Eh? You are aware on your own. <laughs> you, you don't need to. It's all about you coming awake. Please don't toy with word encounters. Don't just sit down listening to teachings and preachers. Reach out for a personal encounter with God by his word. You know, he talks to me, my son, David, from scriptures, because the voice of the Lord is behind every statement of scriptures. My mouth, it has spoken, and my spirit, it has gathered them. The mouth of God is behind every scripture. An encounter means God speaking behind the scriptures to you. On any subject matter, you dominate that area. Because you oppose all things by the word of his power. You dominate in that area. Supernatural boldness is one of the proofs of genuine word encounter. And boldness will engender signs and wonders. Whatever you say boldly and not doubt in your heart, you shall have what you say. Supernatural boldness. Supernatural boldness. Now, another proof of word encounter is supernatural joy. Come on now, what do I call it? Thy words were found and I did eat them. A word was to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. Joy and rejoicing. People with free access to word encounters, they are ever rejoicing. Ever rejoicing. One proof of word encounter is living above depression, living above sorrow of heart. Amen. Because every word found steers joy. Thy words were found. He said, I rejoice at thy word as one that has found a great spoil. Psalm 119 verse 162. Rejoicing is a vital proof of word encounters. Amen. And you know what that does? A merry heart dwells good like a medicine. Amen. But a broken spirit dry the bones. Amen. Amen. With joy and rejoicing, you live a super healthy life. Amen. Super healthy life. He said, the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a broken spirit who can bear. Proverbs 18 and verse 14. And Proverbs 17 verse 22, a merry heart. Do it good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dried the bones. It shall be health to them that find it, life to them that find it, and health to all their flesh. It spurs joy which imparts with healing, health, and wholeness. You can't break the joy of a man that enjoys encounters with God through his world. You can't. Is permanent. 
is growing is not mechanical. It's genuine. The joy of the Lord. Watch out for it. Watch out for it. Number four, proof of word encounter is supernatural strength. What do I call it? The word came to Gideon. And the Lord said, I've not I send thee. Go in this thy might. Every word encounter comes along with divine strength and might. He blew the trumpet without microphone and the whole of Judah gathered. Strength. Divine strength. Now, wait a minute. I pray that from today, because you are entitled to daily new dawn, every day shall be a day of what encounter for you. And every such encounter will bring you new order of strength. Every such encounter will bring you new order of joy. Every such encounter will bring you new order of boldness. Every such encounter will bring you new into new realms of supernatural faith. And that's why your path will keep shining brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. The word is it. The word is it. The word is the custodian of our new dawn heritage. You want it? Go to the word. Go to the world. Proof number five. World encounters their supernatural peace. 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 That passes all understanding. Peace in the midst of the storms. Peace. It's a grace and peace multiplies by knowledge. Second Peter. Verse, chapter 1, verse 2. Grace and peace multiplies by knowledge. The more encounters, what encounters we have, the greater peace we enjoy in increasing dimensions. Increasing dimensions. Increasing dimensions. My peace I give unto you, my peace I live with you. He said, be not, not as you were given, given unto thee, let not your heart therefore be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And that comes by the word. It comes by the word. You are at rest in any area of your life where you've had adequate word encounters. Ever at rest. Ever at rest. I did my first teaching series on victory over death, 1983. Amen. I saw the weakness of death and my dominion over it. Praise God. <laughs> and death knows I don't fear him.
My wife will say, in the midst of anything, I will just say, relax. <laughs> Do what? Relax. I've never found one to say, hey, hey, in my life. Ever since I found that, no. Death, you know yourself that we are not in the same class. Death, you should know, or you don't know. I'm sorry, I know. You should know. Not in the same class. You used to have the power of death. Jesus took it from you. And I saw him when he took it. <laughs> don't pretend as if you have the key. You don't. And I know you don't, so I can't be afraid of you. Oh, we just lost one engine of the aircraft. Okay, make your you turn back to Lagos. And I mean, you, you want to take some snacks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, take some snacks now. We were taking snacks on the devil's head. <laughs> The captain's sweat was like droplet of blood from his forehead. <laughs> was oozing for. I was as relaxed as in my bedroom. Relax, make a turn back to Lagos. In the midst of the Holocaust this last time, I was in Batov. I said, everybody relax. Jesus, thank you. Now let's go. You know why in the beginning was the world? The world was the God and the world was God. And his name is who? Jesus. So, and he's the Prince of Peace. So every encounter with the world is an encounter with peace. And the more encounter you have with the world, the more of his peace you enjoy and manifest. Every of your fears is gone today. you check the boldness of Moses, it was drawn from encounters with the raw word of the Lord. Go to Pharaoh. Pharaoh, stop that. Where is the confidence? From the source. The source. You are heading with three million people into the wilderness. How are they going to eat? Where would they plant? When would they reap? How would they survive? Where would they get water to drink? Supernatural faith coming forth from world encounters. I pray in the name of Jesus. Because one thing is needful. How many things are needful? Look, time for the two. One thing is needful. It puts you in command of all things. One thing is needful, and Mary has chosen that good part a desperation for an encounter with the world. One thing, one thing that put you in command of all things. One thing, one thing. Put you in command of all things. One thing, one thing. And put you in command of all things. I pray for grace to take responsibility for a tireless grave for continuous encounters with the world in the name of Jesus Christ. Is somebody blessed? Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Now, number six. Proofs of word encounters. And please, I'd like you to take this from the depth of your heart. The word of God is defined as the wisdom of God. Luke eleven forty nine, 49, and the wisdom of God saith, and it was referring to the word of God. Every man's wisdom is conveyed by his words, and so is the wisdom of God. So word encounters engender supernatural wisdom. What is it? Hear what David said, a man who was said to be as smart as an angel of God. Oh, how love I thy word. Psalm 119 verse 97. It's my meditation all the day long. Thou through thy commandments has made me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. 
He said, I have more understanding than all my teachers for thy testimonies and my meditation. He said, I understand more than the ancients before I, because I keep thy precepts. Amen. I understand more than the ancients. Here Paul speaking. He said, I'm from a child. 2 Timothy 3.15 Thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith that is in Christ Jesus. You know that works with the wise shall be wise. And God is the only wise God. So every applied encounter with the Lord, with the world, puts you into partnership with God. So you are walking with the only wise God who is wiser than the wisest. Can I hear your amen? And so it keeps rubbing on you on daily basis. Many, many people in the body of Christ will be operating with heavenly wisdom before Jesus comes. They will be in perfect, sweatless control of the affairs of life. This is so important. The commandment of the Lord as you are making wise the simple. God's word makes wise. Makes wise. Every encounter with the word makes wise. And the more encounter, the wiser, and the more the wiser, and the wiser, and the wiser, you keep going. This is so important. So, word encounters engender supernatural wisdom, steers it up in us. And what is the effect of wisdom? Whence has this man this wisdom and these mighty works? God's wisdom is not just a wisdom of words, it's a wisdom of mighty works. How manifold are thy works, O God? In wisdom as thou made them all. Psalm 104 verse 24. The earth is also full of thy riches. Now, so it's a wisdom of works. Mighty works. Not just mighty words. Words are cheap. Mighty works. The works that sinners will see are not their head. This is God. The business sinners will see are not their head. This is God. The ministries that unbelievers and your antagonists will see and say, this is God. That's all you're talking about is the wisdom of mighty works, not mighty words. Not speaking big grammar. Wisdom of mighty works. The Queen of Sheba said, half was not told me. The things I see, not the things I hear. The things I see. Now, the world should get ready for new waves of mighty works Amen. that will be coming from you. Amen. Coming from you. Amen. Coming from you. Amen. Coming from you. Amen. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen? Can I hear your loudest amen? amen? Thank you, Jesus. Proof number seven, and we stop there. Proofs of word encounters. The last we're looking at, not the least, is supernatural health. What do I call it? Supernatural health. Now, wait a minute. We are getting back to the early days of the church where we will just come and mention is any sick among you? We don't pray for the sick anymore in the church. Now, call on the elders in your area. They will pray over you and then get out of it and be in church next Sunday. Amen. <laughs> Is any sick among you? Don't wait around. We are not praying for people out here. Go to your areas and call for the elders around your house. They will pray for you, lay hands on you, and then you go back to work. Praise God. I mean, sickness was alien to the early church. Come and say, alien. But today we brag ourselves. This is my doctor in Australia, my doctor in Canada, he treats fingers. <laughs> my doctor in uh, Japan, 
twist the knees. <laughs> so when I have issues with my knees, which I do have, I go to them. When I have issues with my finger, I go to them. People pride themselves in ignorance. This thing is available for free. It's available for free. Available. Why spending your money of that which is not adding value to you? You return with ba baggages of side effects. You say you are not hearing, they give you medicine. Your eye is trying to open, your eye, <laughs> and your ear is deaf. Is anything wrong with it? No. But a genuine word encounter in the area of health will give it to you for free. Forever free. Free forever. An old man over 60, maybe getting to 70, uh, read the book Keys to Divine Health and on page 20 caught a word that the devil is not a gentleman. He was on admission for high blood pressure and hypertension. He jumped out of the bed. He said, discharge me, I'm going home. The daughter was a doctor in that office, in, in that hospital, and discharged himself. 1989, I saw him 1996, still free from high blood pressure and hypertension. One word encounter said to him. One word what? Encounter said to him. Somebody's health issue is finally settled here. My son, attend to my words. Proverbs 4, 20 22. Give ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Don't let what anybody say preoccupies you or engage you. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they shall be life to them that find it and health to all their flesh. The word health means a medicine to all their flesh. Oh Lord, I desire an encounter in your word for my healing health and wholeness. And you give it two days, three days with the word, the Bible, and anointed books on the subject and a desperation for an encounter. You walk free forever. I, I am giving the glory to Jesus. I'm not on any medication, not even vitamins. I have access in case you need. I don't have any problem with it. 1979, I secured my insurance. My health insurance with Jesus. 1979, from Matthew 8, 17. My health insurance was secured. Amen. And I'm enjoying that policy till now. Himself took my infirmity and bear my sicknesses on his body. Amen. Amen. The word infirmity talks about sicknesses. And grief talks about pains. So you are ordained to live a sickness-free and pain-free life. Sickness-free and pain-free life. But it takes an encounter with the world to free yourself. You are long overdue for liberty. Amen. So that's what happens. I pray that every session of Shiloh will bring you another encounter. And these encounters will culminate in the stirring of supernatural faith in your heart. Supernatural boldness and confidence in the midst of the storm. Yeah, that what my son said, he said, release him now, release him now. There was a time they captured one of our pastors in, in uh, what is it, uh, Calabar or somewhere. I said they should call me. They called me. I said in 24 hours, you don't leave him, you are dead. 
I said, I speak to you. That was the end. There was no way to call. They couldn't call anymore. They had no choice but let him go. You don't need any soldier on the line, sir. A prophet speaks. The force of hell are down. Supernatural. You know, my confidence is in the fact that I'm called an apostle. Apostles are territorial commanders. You know. Now, listen to me. Peter was in command over the circumcision. And so Paul was in command of the Gentiles. There are apostles set over territories. There are heaven's principalities that seize the kingdom from, from the principalities of hell. They seized them. They captured someone and I said, within seven hours, and they were telling me at 8 p.m., I said, within seven hours, we, five minutes to seven, in the dead of the night, please go, please go, please go. Do you know them? I don't know them. Every encounter, sports these virtues that money cannot buy, supernatural faith, supernatural boldness, supernatural joy, supernatural peace. All of this package in one. That's why it's not the preaching of the word that makes a man. It's the encounters with the word that makes a man. Encounters with the word. The Lord sent a word into Jacob and turned him to a nation. The word dominated the whole nation. Come and say, I'm free. free. Say, Lord, I'm free. And what supernatural adult faith does is to keep the devil at bay. He said, above all, taking the shield of faith and you quench all. How many of them? All. You quench how many of them? All. all the fiery darts of the devil from today. An end has come to every satanic harassment on your life. Yeah. Somebody bless this morning. Yeah. Give the Lord the biggest clap of amen. The word you see is what we call an encounter. And the Lord appeared again unto Samuel at Shiloh by the word of the Lord. The word which Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw. Saw. Isaiah 2.1. The proof of having seen the word are the ones I've listed. The word you see has committed God to give. For as far as your eyes can see, unto you will I give it. As far as your eyes can see, unto you will I give it. As far as your eyes can see, unto you will I give it. I therefore decree that the eyes of your understanding be opened. I must not miss my encounter with you, Jesus, by your word here at Shiloh. I mustn't miss my encounter with you. So anoint my eyes with eye salves that I may see. Jesus, open my eyes to behold the wondrous things out of thy law. Jesus, and let every encounter come along with proofs in my life. Come along with proofs in my life. Come along with proofs in my life. Let every encounter with your word come along with proofs in my life. Would you please stand to your feet? Everybody, stand to your feet. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your two hands and pray that every moment on this ground, every moment at all the viewing centers, every moment of our life throughout this Shiloh period, shall be moments of encounters with God through his word. Even while we are in bed, while we are eating in our various places. Now, Jesus, I desire an undeniable encounter with you through your word all through this season. Shiloh. Pray. Pray. I 
doesn't miss you. No. I mustn't miss the encounters you reserve for me on this ground. No. your life right now. And believe it as you pray. Believe it as you pray. to pray. Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Every testimony of triumph in a believer's life is traceable to an encounter with the world. Because every testimony is a confirmation of the world. Every testimony is a confirmation of the word. God was working with them, confirming the word with signs following. Every testimony is a confirmation of the word. Every testimony. That's why the life of any man will be full of testimonies as long as he keeps having encounters with the word of God. I pray today that your life will never run testimony dry again. Your life will never run testimony dry again. <laughs> Jesus said, not all men can receive this thing. When God said the number of your days I will fulfill, that means that's a number. That means that's what? <laughs> that means your life and lifespan has a number with God. And the number is only once. First call and 20 shall be the number of your days. That's what he said. Not all men can receive that saying. Not all men. Genesis 6 3. Not all men can receive that saying. And David came and said, Look, I saw it all, but me, I choose three score and ten. And in Psalm 90, verse 10, three score and ten, he chose. And three score and ten, he died. Amen. Amen. But I have this number for you if you're interested. Oh, what God is saying. 
And each one choose whatever is satisfied with. David fought and fought. He said, I think I fought enough. Let me go. 70 is enough. I can't be fighting like this all my life. He was fighting all his life. Man, you are the, the most aged saints of all times we found in this generation. Amen. I said the most, the most, the most, the most aged saints of all time in their large numbers shall be found in this generation. Amen. If you believe you're one of them, let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. It is to everyone according to his faith. It's impossible for your life to remain at the same spot after this Shiloh. Amen. In the course of this Shiloh, you are changing levels. Amen. In the course of this Shiloh, you are changing levels. Amen. For the blessings of the day, lift up your two hands and give God thanks. Give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. Glory to God. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Please get seated. Give the Lord a big hand as you do. All of the specialized sessions are very important. We've never lacked divine interventions in them ever since. So please identify the ones that are of interest, the one that's of interest to you, and be there. Somebody gave a testimony last Sunday. He was at one of the viewing centers here in Lagos, and didn't even have a paper to write what he wanted, and had to collect some rough paper from someone, but he turned here with a set of twins last Sunday. <laughs> Amen. He named them there, David and Dominion. And return down here with David and Dominion last Sunday. Please find the one that applies to you and be there. Now, we have this in pursuit of academic excellence for those who are challenged, and most of the challenges are demonic. Please be there and then free yourself. You saw that lady, the first graduate in their own generation. generation. What a devil. The person supposed only her died when she was writing jam. What a devil. But she made it. Jesus helped her. Amen. Jesus destroyed the siege. Thank you. But they are, you won't need to pay for your child twice in one class anymore. Amen. Yeah, they are. Because God imparts us with grace under his word anytime, anywhere. Nobody is permitted to live with sickness again here. Yeah. So be there. All those sessions are word loaded and life loaded. Be there. Some are under the siege of generational causes. You can free yourself from it by knowing the key that will open the door. Every prison gate that may have caged you in must give way this time. Yeah. And a lot of people are under marital siege. I mean, it's clear. Chains have banned them. But it's the one that says the family, the solitary families, and break them that are bound with chains. Many are just bound with chains. Somebody came up and said, there has never been any marriage in, his fam in our family. And Jesus distinguished her. Amen. It's all liberation sessions. So be there. Praise the Lord. And then you shall not be barren. I mean, it's clear you are ordained for fruitfulness as a seed of Abraham. And you are walking away from here, blessed of the Lord as he has spoken to you. We have the minister's summit at the youth chapel, I mean at the CU chapel, and that will be three o'clock in the afternoon. Praise the Lord. And the Youth Alive Forum holds here at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. And same time we have the leadership forum of the church that holds at the youth chapel. All this is lined up for your own liftings and new dawn encounters endeavor to be there. Hallelujah. Give the Lord the biggest clap offering. And please rise to your feet and give thanks to God one more time for the encounters of today.